Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'll be showing you how we can use the arrange function in Fusion 360 to maximize our stock and fit all of these letters onto a single four foot by four foot sheet, which is the perfect workspace for my work B, C, and C. So on this back wall here, when you first walk in the front door, we're gonna go ahead and put that large logo, which is about 14 feet wide. And we do have some other smaller logos that she wants to put in the front that's gonna utilize her uh, more artwork portion of the logo. So I wanna retain as much of this material as I can to reuse for that part. So let's go ahead and jump right into Fusion 360 and get started with this project. So here we are in Fusion. And what I did is I drew up a vector over an Inkscape of their, of their text. And then I brought that vector in here and extruded each of the pieces so they are three-dimensional bodies of each of these parts. So we're at just about 16 inches tall by 14 feet wide for this entire side. So what I want to do with this is cut this out using as few sheets of MDF as possible. And my machine fits a half sheet at four feet by four feet to cut it once. So if I could fit this in that sheet, that'd be great. So in order to do that, we have to go up here to preferences. So under these preview features, we can go down to the manufacturing section and we want to turn on advanced arrange this checkbox here. Now that we've updated our preferences, we have a few options here. This design is pretty simple, since I'm just doing a flat sign. If you had designed a full 3D model um, with multiple pieces that kind of interlock together and you have like a whole complex structure that you've built, uh, you can also come in here and create a manufacturing model, which what that'll do is if you make any changes in, in, the, in the design workspace, it will bring any of those changes over here. Now that we have that manufacturing model open, we can go ahead and click edit the manufacturing model and it brings us into a new uh, kind of workspace up here, similar to the design one. So what I want to do is lay out my sheet. So I'm going to create a sketch from that top down, since that's how we're machining this. And we'll lay out a rectangle and by changing those to 40 by 48, now we have our half sheet of MDF right there. So now with that set for our stock, we can close that. And under modify, we have a new function here that wasn't here before called a range. Now I can select my objects either by clicking on them or over here in the tree. Uh, however, since these are discrete bodies and not components, it is not letting me add more than one at a time and I need to have all of them selected. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click on here and create components for bodies. And that gives me all these new ones. Now, that's my logo I was talking about before. I don't need that right now, so I'm gonna hide those two. I'm gonna cut that into a different size, so I'm gonna actually need to resize that one before I uh, try and fit it on here. We can go back over here under Modify and Arrange, and then select all of our parts. And then for our sheet, I wanna use that. Now this right here, this, this one here allows us to mirror these, so if the top surface of your MDF kind of matters, uh, then you can do that. For MDF, it doesn't. I don't have this pre-painted or anything. So I'm just gonna leave the way it is and keep on going through. If you were using painted MDF or uh, a two-layer acrylic or something like that, you might you would want to uncheck that if the top of your letter matters. So I do have it set here. Um, and since I did set it to 40 by 48, I do have quite a bit of small area around here. Oh, and since I had some extra bodies turned on here, I threw them inside this middle section. I'll just ignore that when I set up the toolpaths. Now we have it nested perfectly, we can go right into our manufacturing. And I'm gonna finish edit under this. So now we can go right into the setup, and create a new setup for this one. For our model, we are going to use uh, these. And that sketch. Now I don't want the offsets on here. So I'm gonna set those back to zero, zero. And see our stock width is 48, 48 and three quarter inch for the Z. We'll bring them down here. 
to this corner on the bottom actually. And I'm gonna just set Z zero using my wasteboard and then X and Y to this lower left corner. And I do have some points here to add screws to hold this down. Plenty up here and then a few right here as well. We can go right into our 2D contouring around the outside of these shapes. But we want to do this in a specific order. So I want to carve the insides of these first. I can use this eighth inch flat end though, which is actually a compression bit, but we use that, it'll work just fine. I like to use a negative 0.01 in there, and that's gonna just barely cut into my wasteboard. I'm gonna set this out for multiple depths. So what I'm doing right now is I've only selected those two. I'm gonna carve those first, and then I'm gonna du duplicate this tool path and just select all the other areas that I want. And then for this multiple depths, so 0.08, just to make sure we have nice edges on here, I'm gonna add this ramp and we should have a good tool path for that. Now we can either duplicate this and then create a second tool path or I'm just going to go ahead and open it back up and select the rest that I want. I like to just select a few of those inside ones just to make sure I've got a good working toolpath. And I'll go through and select all of the rest. And this will also be the point where we add tabs in. Since I told it that we're using the selected contour for our depth, I need to make sure I select the bottom of each of these parts and not the tops. Otherwise, it's going to just barely go through and skim the surface. So now I can just add tabs in here. I want uh, triangular tabs and at points, and then I can put them where I want to. And for these, I'm going to set this at 0.33 wide and 0 .0 0 0.125 tall. So an eighth of an inch tall and a third of an inch wide. And with this at tab positions selected, I can start positioning them wherever I need them at. And for this part, it doesn't matter if you have them to the top or bottom, they will position themselves properly. And you do have some back-to-back -back parts like this. It helps to get those tabs lined up pretty well to give it the most possible strength. So I'm gonna come back over here to a top-down view so I can make sure that they're lined up quite well. Since this is a flat section, I like to add more tabs along the easy to sand flat sections than the round ones. Now with all those set, I guess I'll add one more right in here just to make sure that doesn't move around at all. So we've got a good amount of tabs added in there. I'll go ahead and click OK and see how my toolpath runs. I do want to make sure that it gets those center parts first. So this particular toolpath I thought had a, uh, an option to order by selection, but it does not. So I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this over. And edit this one. And with that, I'll go ahead and remove those tabs first.
and then I can remove these selections. And then I'll do the opposite of that over here on this other one. Instead of, instead of manually removing all the tabs, I'm just going to delete them and delete the selection. Come back over, reselect these two spots, and then re add the tabs. So now I've manually forced it to cut those first and cut out all the rest second. So by selecting both, I can go ahead and run my simulation. We'll speed that up just a little bit. Looks like our timing is set right at 46, 48 minutes combined. I have to double check my feed rates. Uh, but my depth per pass was good. So I'm just gonna double check the feed rates real quick. Everything seems fine. I don't see any red collision markers down here. So we will just skip through here real quick. I think it's quite an interesting sequence we've got going on here. We are kind of jumping all over the place. So I might go ahead and alter that. Um, let's see what I can do here to this. Oh, that was the button I was supposed to click earlier to uh, make it do it in the order that I collect, selected them. And then would have done those center ones first, then all the rest. It was preserve order. Um, however, that's that's okay. Um, we'll do it the way we have it set up now anyway, and so I'm back and changing that. All right, so we can run the simulation one more time again. All right, we are good to go with that. I'm gonna go ahead and save these. Let me make sure my machine is set properly. All right, we're good there. All right, the G code looks fine. I'll go ahead and close that and then open this G code up and open build so I can get ready with this carve. And uh, if you guys haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and make sure you like the video. If you have learned anything uh, about the nesting process over in Fusion 360, uh, thank you guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. And as always, have an awesome day.